Hey guys, and welcome back to History of Vision Success. Today we're doing an A-level video focusing on um, the Tudors course. And in particular, we're looking at another video based on foreign policy and some of the context um, around that. So this is kind of a revision video surrounding Scotland. So I'm gonna go through everything that's kind of significant about the role of Scotland under the Tudors so that by the point of Elizabeth, you're really clear in understanding what's going to come next. Um, now, could I just do a really quick kind of um, plea to have a look at my Instagram, which I've just created, which is going to be full of little bite-sized nugget pieces of chunks to help you succeed in your A-level. Now, there will be a different thing every single day that's focused on giving you some very accessible information. So it might be, for example, how would I answer this question? And I give you an A-level question and I show you what I would argue. I tell you what I think the most important um, factors are that need to be included, almost like a mini essay plan. So I think that would be really helpful. And then every day of the week, there is something different. There is some on revision tips, how to get... Um, you know, really good at revision. There is an A star day where I give you some either some information or some little tricks, kind of insider tricks on how to um, really get that A star. And then every Friday, I'm going to be revealing some part of maybe an essay plan, a key conclusion, um, part of some revision notes, something that I think is useful and that I give you a little bit of um, every Friday as kind of a reward for getting through the week and um, really helping you focus on your revision or whatever you want to do over the weekend. So go and have a follow. As I said, um, it's just at History Vision Success. Um, it will be really great as a way of interacting a bit more, um, kind of seeing what modules people do, um, where the need really is with these videos, because it's difficult for me to know how many of you do each module, et cetera, et cetera. So, Moving back to Elizabeth. So I did film another one of these videos previously. So this is kind of the second one in that series, just to go back over at her aims. Well, she wants to be peaceful. She wants to avoid costly wars. She wants to emulate her grandfather, Henry VII. There is, in addition, greater need for her to avoid war because she is a woman. She is a Protestant within a very Catholic Europe and she is unmarried. So therefore Elizabeth needs to be very, very careful with what she does in terms of her foreign policy because she is significantly vulnerable compared to the other Tudor monarchs. Now I'm focusing in this video on Scotland. So starting from the beginning, Scotland is forever a source of tension for, um, for Tudors, but also for monarchs in general. Now, Obviously, Scotland and England share a very kind of important geographical border. In terms of threat, Scotland could potentially be arguably the greatest threat because of that border. It's the easiest for them than anybody else to invade England and cross that border, something which they've done on multiple occasions. So we know, therefore, Scotland's going to be important. Now, in addition, it's been a long source of tension for English monarchs um, partly due to the old alliance that they signed with France in 1295 and that kind of legacy of friendship between um, Scotland and France. Now, Henry VIII in 1543 had signed the Treaty of Greenwich with Scotland, which had negotiated the marriage between Edward, his son, and Mary, Queen of Scots, who was very little at this point. This had happened mainly because Scotland at this point was weak. They had just lost the Battle of Solway, where the Scots had been in a weak position. Um, therefore, they weren't able to bargain very well with the English. Now, in addition, James V had died soon after this battle, leaving his six-day-old daughter, Mary, Queen of Scots, as queen and heir to the Scottish throne. So they don't have a strong leader either at this point. That meant that really the Treaty of Greenwich um, wasn't something they wanted to enter into and they very quickly repudiate, which means reject this treaty in December of 1543, renewing their alliance with France. This meant Henry got incredibly angry about this, as you can expect, and he sends Edward Seymour to, as he says, put all fire and sword to Edinburgh town, burn it. Um, we call this the rough wooing, which is essentially the invasion of Scotland, and it saw a very savage campaign in Scotland, probably one of the worst 
that ever happened. Now, many things happen in this war. I'm not going to go through all of them, but there is um, an English victory at the Battle of Pinkie, which put much of southern Scotland under military occupation. This led to increased French support. Obviously, Scotland and France had their alliance. So the French come out in support of Scotland. And it also leads to Mary being whisked away to safety in France, um, where she is betrothed to the Dauphin of France in August 1548. This obviously means that her marriage to Edward is not going to happen. In 1550, we get the Treaty of Boulogne between France and England, which ended those hostilities and kind of therefore insinuates the fact that Scotland and England are also at peace now. They formally signed the Treaty of Norham in 1551 um, under Dudley, Earl of Northumberland, and the English at that point abandoned their holdings in Scotland and the border is reverted to the original line. So kind of all of this tension under Henry and Edward um, leads to kind of nothing really because um, we've, we've gone back to that original line. Now, under Mary, Mary obviously aligns herself to Spain through her marriage to Philip, which could lead to war with France because Spain and France were traditionally um, enemies of each other, both big power blocks in Europe wanting to kind of have that top spot. So we've got the potential under Mary for some tensions with France and therefore likely with Scotland too. She is supported to, to join Philip in war against France, which leads to the loss of Calais, as we know, um, and draws kind of Scotland into this as well. Now, in addition to that, Mary of Guise has gone to rule Scotland on behalf of her daughter in 1554. She is supported by the French. Now, things start to get a little bit complicated here because um, the crown in Scotland is challenged by Scottish Protestants. Now we know those Protestants under Elizabeth as the Lords of Congregation, okay, led by Knox um, and other figures who work very closely with Cecil because of the Protestant um, link they have. However, they're not legally, legally kind of in control. Mary of Guise is in control. Her daughter, Mary Queen of Scots, the true Queen of Scotland. Her husband, James V, the man who died at the Battle of Solway. So from 1554, she goes and takes that place to rule Scotland, supported by the French. Now, as I said, she's challenged by um, Scottish Protestants, which leads to the Siege of Leith, where French troops fortified the town and port of Leith against an English, an, an English and Scottish Protestant force. After the death of Mary of Guise, the Treaty of Berwick between England and Scotland is signed, which meant the French garrisons leave Scotland. Now this leads up to the Treaty of Edinburgh, which was one of kind of Cecil's big moments um, in Scottish foreign policy, where he formally makes an alliance with Scotland, which kind of formally replaces the old alliance. So this new age of Anglo-Scottish accord essentially. From that point England and Scotland share quite positive relations for the duration of Elizabeth's reign and I think it's very important to understand what happened um, in Scotland prior to this to really kind of know why actually under Elizabeth they are both very important threatening force but also kind of her greatest ally really. One other thing to note is that much of the Treaty of Edinburgh, much of the alliance between Scotland and England was very much pushed and calculated by Cecil. He was the driving force in that. He persuades Elizabeth to help the, the Lords of Congregation and send her troops up um, against the Scottish um, Queen. So therefore, you know, it's interesting. It also matches up with kind of that question of how far was Cecil really the ruler of, of England under kind of the, the politics section. So a very interesting kind of angle there. Now, anyway, that was my video. I will be doing another one on France and Ireland, giving the context of them, an overview revision video of what's happening in those countries, particularly interesting with France because um, it's not really mentioned in the AQA revision guide. However, I've got some very interesting points about France that you can really use in your essays on this topic. As always, I'd be very grateful if you can like the video and subscribe to the channel, and I hope that you have found it helpful.